What's up YouTube, Redbeard's Garage, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at a 9 horse Honda and putting a few performance parts on it. Of course, as always, we hollered at Go Power Sports because we had a 9 horse Honda or a GX270 sitting around in the garage. Now, I've been wanting to build this thing for a while to put on a street go kart. Now, the big difference between a GX270 and a GX200, a GX200 is pretty much a Predator 6.5 horse, and the 270 is pretty much a Predator 301cc, which is an 8 horse, but the Honda uh, variant of it is a 9 horse. Now, this is a true Honda, so it's going to have them good parts on it. It's going to have the good head, you know, the good block, a little bit better material than the Predators. If you can get your hands on a Honda, definitely do over the Predators. Now what we're going to be doing today is jetting the carburetor and going to put an air filter on it as well and as, as an exhaust and remove the governor. Now I've never worked on one of these 9 horse Hondas but they should be pretty much the same as a Predator 6.5 horse or a Honda GX200. So without further ado we'll show you the parts we're going to be installing and jump on the workbench and get this Honda done. Okay so of course we have the old Honda GX270 or Honda 9 horse up on the workbench. You can see it's missing the air box, but in, uh, in overall shape, it's pretty good. The gas tank is chipping, but we'll probably not even be using this gas tank. We're probably gonna use one off of a Predator because uh, we're gonna be putting this on the street go-kart. I think this will be an awesome upgrade in power. These six and a half horse are pretty fun motors, but I really wanna see what, the, uh, what they call the big block motors, what kind of power they will do. So, what we're gonna be installing is a nice header from Go Power Sports. All the links to all these products are in the description below, so don't forget to check that out, as well as a 10% discount code to save you some moolah on them go-kart parts. We also have a Go Power Sports uh, air filter adapter for the carburetor. Now this has a brand new carburetor on it. I have heard online that you can upgrade the 270 with a 340, a GX340 carburetor. It's a little bit bigger bore. And we actually have a uh, locked up 340 over there. So we're gonna grab the carburetor off of it later on and see how bad it is inside and if we can use that carburetor on it because we definitely want to get all the power we possibly can out of this nine horse. So Go Power Sports also sent us the 420 jet and the 301 jet. Um, so I'm going to see, play with these, probably start off with the uh, 301, but I would think the 301 jet would be, uh, I'm pretty sure these are the performance variants of the 301 and the 420. Uh, I actually need to ask him at Go Power Sports that because uh, I wouldn't think they would send me two stock jets, but we'll see. Uh, which one works the best in our application. And as always, we have a filter and a pre-filter to throw on that air filter adapter. Now we're gonna start off uh, on this engine. We're going to go ahead and disassemble everything. We're gonna remove the carburetor, the air filter, all that, remove the gas tank, because it does have some fuel in it, and who knows how long that fuel's been sitting in there. And we'll go ahead and give the uh, carburetor a general clean out, and I'm also gonna go ahead and pull the carburetor off of that GX340, and we'll mock it and see if there's a physical difference between the two, and if there is, like I said, we'll go with the 340 because it should be a little bit bigger opening. Um, and then we'll move on to taking off the oil sensor as well as open up the engine, draining all the oil, open up the engine, and removing the governor. So let's get to it. All right, let's get to taking off this uh, air filter box. I get a lot of crap talking uh, for me using an impact on pretty much everything. The reason I use an impact is simply not because I want to torque these things on or they're too hard to break loose. It's simply speed. So I'm going to do this one with, a, with my impact and this one with a ratchet just to show you. I mean, if you shave off three seconds off of this one, that's a lot of three seconds over all the boats. So uh, let's, let's just give it a test. Done. Now ratchet. You win. Perfect. I mean, it had to be at least double the time. Okay, next, uh, there's actually on this nine horse, there is a uh, 
10 millimeter on the top up here. Very, very classy Honda, very classy. Now this should slide off. Everything's pretty much worn out. Now the guy said when he started this, it did want to just rev like crazy. So uh, that was definitely wrong right there. This throttle rod was uh, just sitting on top of this little um, butterfly. Looks like we could use another spark plug wire soon. That one's all chewed up. Now I'm gonna set a uh, drain pan under this gas tank. Actually, I'm just gonna take the gas tank off. Oh, and by the way, if y'all haven't watched the, uh, the torque converter video in a while, which I'm sure you don't go back and watch them much, but there's a guy pretty much chewing me out for how I ride on the side of the road. Pretty entertaining stuff if you wanna go take a peek and uh, let that guy know your feelings about the situation. He pretty much just uh, yells at me and I mean obviously vent some anger. He has some anger build up. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull that line off and drain all this gas out. That ah, wasn't horrible. Yeah, there we go. Okay, on these rods, pretty much the same way on a Predator. If you'll pull the carburetor most of the way out, you can uh, push this back. Um, if you slide that out enough, you can slide that right up. There's a little little lip you have to get it past um, to slide it out. So now we can remove that carburetor. Okay, now I'm going to be removing the whole governor arm, which uh, usually is a 10 millimeter, and I believe it is. All right, we got that off there. Now I always take a flathead and get down in there and you can bend that apart so that'll slide off a lot easier. There we go. Well, I thought there we go, but if you uh, wiggle it back and forth, it'll come out. And I've removed that throttle rod because we'll probably reuse this later. Also gonna keep this uh, thicker spring that was on the rear of this uh, this governor arm because I use those as throttle return springs. We got that old arm off and this is garbage. Now I'm going to pull this uh, this clip out and actually keep it. These will come in handy uh, on different brakes and throttle setups later. So I guess now I'm going to uh, drain all the oil that's in here and we can go on to uh, removing this side cover and taking the insides of the governor out. I guess while we're here actually we can go ahead and cut the oil sensor wires which is uh, these two going in the back of the engine right here. Okay now I'm going to cut these two wires going through the the block for the oil sensor and then I can clip this. Alright we got that popped open. Now I'm going to be running the kill switch on the uh, front of my engine of course so I'm just going to uh, disconnect this one right here and then I can get rid of this whole mess. Looks like I can take out a tin right there to unground that kill switch. Now I can pop off this old kill switch. There we go. Finally got that thing off. Now I'm just going to trash this. Now I'm going to put me a nice uh, piece of heat, sh heat shrink on this to keep it protected. Uh, basically if you ground this out, it grounds out the cool and will not let it fire no more, thus killing the engine. I'm also going to get rid of this uh, wire holder here, this little wire clip. And throw it in the trash as well. Okay, I'm also going to be removing this uh, this old throttle mechanism. Just a couple of 10 millimeter uh, bolts all the way around it. One in the front on the right hand side of the valve cover. One on the left hand side of the head. And then one on the right hand side of the head as well. And it's located behind the... Uh, the flywheel shield and we can pull that whole big clunky mess off the only thing I'm going to keep off of this is this uh, throttle hold down these are really handy to keep I have a bunch of them off all the uh, factory uh, predator throttles that I've taken apart just got to put that side cover uh, nut or bolt back in he's using the impact on 10 millimeters oh <laughs> I bet the guy who made the uh, comment about my impact driver me using it on 10 millimeters probably doesn't own an impact driver because if you own an impact driver you're going to use that puppy for everything at least i do it knocks half the time 
off this junk. Okay, it looks like we got the normal six uh, bolts. Actually, we have seven around this one, it looks like, and they're 12 millimeters on the GX270s. Ooh, that one's a tight one. Hit it one more time. Yeah, it ain't coming. Use this tiny little ratchet with a hammer fist action. All right, will she break loose on her own? Oh, nope. Okay, now I'm just gonna take a chisel and, oh gosh, dang. Mother is on there. And break into that engine, I don't really care if I hurt the gasket, I have some gasket maker. I haven't drained my oil because I have an oil pan underneath right now, so I'm not really worried about the oil coming out on me, but you may. And always be careful taking these side covers off because the the cams can, the cam can fall out if you're not careful. The oil actually looked pretty much brand new in this thing. You just gotta keep wiggling this thing. Probably wouldn't hurt if I threw some uh, some WD-40 around the shaft of this to uh, really get it broke loose, but I didn't, all right? Okay, I finally got this freaking side cover off, and in the process, the uh, governor gear did fall off. This is just uh, set on that shaft like that, and it has a little pin. The uh, shaft was real rusted, and I sanded it with uh, some 120 grit sandpaper at first, and obviously that wasn't enough, so I finally had to take the good old Dremel and just take a, a coat off of this whole entire inner shaft where this, uh, where this bearing it rides. But yeah, make sure you sand that shaft as much as possible. Try to make it shiny, really feel it, and see if you can feel any burrs with your fingers because uh, I'm telling you, it was a son of a gun getting this off. Okay, as you can see, there's two 10 millimeter uh, bolts in there holding that oil sensor in. We're gonna remove it all the way. And of course, make sure you grab those uh, those bolts out. Now with this, uh, the rest of this piping going up to that bolt, we're just gonna take our pliers and cut it off. I'm gonna cut it kind of short at first and we'll get in there and cut it off a little bit more later. Now I can remove uh, this oil sensor all the way and we're just gonna throw it away. Look how old or that sludge is built up from people not changing the oil. Always keep your oil change pretty regular. Uh, about every 10 hours I do in these engines and I always use synthetic because without a an oil filter you have no way of filtering them bad particles out of your oil and they just sit around in there to cause sludge like that. Sickety, 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 uh. sickety, Alright, shut up. <coughs> Okay, now I'm pulling out the uh, little metal nipple in the Predators. This is plastic. Uh, this sets down behind the uh, governor gear and make sure you get that out. And like I said, my governor gear actually just fell out after I pried on the uh, side case so much. So I made sure to find that little ring and I'm gonna clean up all this uh, sludge that's in here. There's just a bunch of buildup in this engine case from what, where people didn't change their oil on time. So I'm gonna get everything cleaned up and then I'll go to removing this arm uh, the rest of the way out of this block. How I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna slide it uh, all the way up as far as I can, which is about right there. And then I'm going to cut this top off as close as I can to the, the, the metal piece with a uh, Dremel and then I, that'll allow me to be able to slide this rod down into the block and pull it the rest of the way out. And there is a washer on the top of it. Make sure you grab it out when you slide that arm out. So I'm gonna get to uh, cutting that bad boy off real quick. Okay, I got the top cut off of that arm that uh, works in, uh, in series with the governor. Now I'm gonna easily pull this around so I can get the crank weights out of the way. And now, should be able to slide this thing all the way out. 
got that arm out now like I said make sure you grab this washer that's left on top don't leave it in there because if it fell got in between those gears boom bam you run your engine go power sports brand new order mom and dad's money gone so I'm just doing a good real good inspection to make sure I got everything out here I wish I had some brake cleaner I usually keep that stuff on deck but uh, I do not okay so I got everything out of the engine made sure there was no washers left uh, make sure when you pull that little metal cap off that I was showing you uh, this piece right here make sure you get the uh, washer that's underneath um, on this you know it sets on top of that governor gear that cap does the governor gear goes on then the cap and there's a washer um, under there as well so we got everything off we're going to clean this really well i've already got most of the gasket off i just need to wipe the oil off and then we can put a coat of gasket maker high temperature gasket maker and i'll put that side cover back on okay now we have the side cover put all back on and tightened down so i got the header all put on you can see that i had to use some half inch spacers because the studs on this are not all the way to the block they end about halfway down so you need to run to a hardware store and buy you some spacers that will slip over those studs. And uh, like I said, about a half inch will do fine. So we got this all bolted on. Now the exhaust is done and we're going to move on to the carburetor. Okay, I pulled the carburetor off of this 340 and look at that. That is ridiculous. I mean, I'm going to take my scraper and that's the junk. It's like, that's a bug. All right, that's a, a beetle. That's like an oil gas mix with bugs and crap uh, mixed in with it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and say we're not going to be using this one for sure. This will be a garbage. Oh, yeah, that's the worst carburetor I think I've ever seen in my entire life. This is crazy, all the crap that's in there. But this thing uh, was filled with water, this engine. And I probably, at this point, should just give up on it but I think I'm gonna to try to rebuild it because uh, 340 is a pretty expensive motor okay so we have all these carburetors laid out right here this is the Predator 212 carburetor we're gonna also mock it to see the size difference and we have the GX 270 which is the nine horse and the GX 390 now I believe the 390 carburetor is the same as the 240 but uh, we're going to go ahead and mock all these to tell you the size difference. I do have my mic set to millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and see what the 212 is. And the 212 is about 18 and a half. It's reading, you know, uh, 18.6. So 18 and a half on the, um, the stock 212. Now the GX270 is 19.8. Um, so we're going to go ahead and say this is a 20 and uh, then we have the big 390 carburetor which reads out to 26.7 so 27 millimeter um, so you got 18 millimeter 20 and 27 so this should give us a pretty big jump over the factory nine horse i mean you can look at the two port sizes and and completely see it's a a lot bigger upgrade so we're going to go ahead and slap this carburetor on there and uh hopefully she performs pretty well Okay, when we go to put this new carburetor on, we need to take off this backing plate because it's going to be the same size as your carburetor. So uh, I've already removed the one off of the 11 horse, which has a lot bigger opening in it. Uh, so if you basically if you don't uh, replace this backing plate, you're not going to see those gains because it's still going to be restricting you right here. So I'm going to uh, take these studs out with some uh, vice grips, going to bite down on this uh, fatter part and I can unthread those right out and we'll get this swapped out. Now these are usually on there pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and pop out the uh, spark plug wire and I'm going to take one and very gently pry that thing off. Now I can clean this gasket up put my new gasket on we can go on and install that carburetor okay now you can see the size difference uh, this is the original nine horse one and this is the uh, 11 horse one or 13 horse a lot of parts with the 11 and 13 horse are completely the same but you can tell the port difference it's a massive uh, size difference almost uh, it's like a 40 percent size increase so uh we're gonna put the new gasket on this uh i got that off them as much as i could there's still a little bit of gasket maker 
I may hit it with the uh, razor blade a little bit more, but uh, once we get this off, we can put the new gasket on and uh, throw the carburetor on. Okay, we got that new gasket, and I'm going to go ahead and get this stud started and do the same with the, um, the other side. Another way to take these studs off, by the way, is to use two, uh, the two carburetor nuts, back them up against each other, and you can uh, work them back on or off like that. Now we can just thread that stud back in there. We can do the same thing with the other stud and slide our new carb on. Slide our carb on and now we just need to wait for that spacer to come in and we can wrap this up and get it installed it on the street go-kart. Okay so we got that 270 all buttoned up with the uh, governor removed and the new air filter and carb as well as the exhaust. Now this should be a pretty significant power boost because we went up as we said in the video 20 millimeters to a 27 millimeter carburetor that's quite a bit more air and uh, a lot of threads will tell you that this is a really good carburetor uh, to upgrade to to get a lot more power out of the 270. Now the header should give us a lot of power. I wish there was a way to put a muffler on this header. We may do some uh, figuring on that later because I would rather run a muffler. Uh, I just like the way they sound a little bit uh, better than without a muffler than with a muffler. We're also going to be putting a Makuni style carburetor on this like you would find on a dirt bike or a four wheeler like we did on the street go-kart because I know how big of an improvement that was so we definitely want that on this 270. I already got the carburetor. I just need to make a little header to bolt it to the head. Now guys, don't forget to check out our links in the description. Go Power Sports uh, parts that we use in this video are all down there. You can pick up a carburetor for a 390 on Amazon or eBay for around $12. They're super cheap, and if you're a Prime member, uh, then you'll get that in two days as well. Um, also, don't forget to run that spacer that uh, looks like this in front of your carburetor. Uh, that'll go in between your carburetor and the air box or in between your carburetor and the air filter adapter. Now that's going to cause it to just rev uh, uncontrollably and stuff uh, if you don't have that spacer in there. So make sure uh, you put that bad boy in there because you could blow your motor up. We are putting a 40 series torque converter on this 270 when we install it on the uh, street go-kart. So it should be pretty mean. This thing's got a lot more torque than the uh, 6.5 horse or the Predator 212. So should be a pretty nice uh, upgrade. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe guys. And always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out. Thank you.